How's it going, guys? Today in this video, we're going to be going over uh, the module 12 or chapter 12 part of the vertical, of the, not the vertical, uh, but ch uh, the final exam review. There we go. Um, and like always, the completed key is already on Canvas. Uh, the completed notes are also on Canvas. You need to go back and look at some uh, old properties because there are a lot to know for this module. Please go do that. Um, and yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, on number one, we're told we need to translate the radical expressions into expressions with rational exponents and vice versa. Uh, simplify numerical expressions when possible and assume all variables are positive. So we're just going to switch between exponent to a radical or a radical to an exponent. So number one, we have an exponent. So we're going to switch that into a radical. So when we do, before we do that, we can actually rewrite this as uh, negative 125 is the same thing as negative 5 cubed. All of that to the 4 over 3. And since we have a 3 over here, or rather we have a power to a power, we can rewrite this as negative 5 to the, it's actually two ways out parentheses, we can rewrite this as negative 5 to the 12 over 3. 12 over 3 is the same thing as 4. And remember, if you have a power to a power, like we have here, the power raised to another power, you just multiply the two exponents. That's how we got the 12 over 3, which reduces down to negative 5 to the fourth power. And negative 5 to the fourth power is 625. So we didn't even need to change this into a radical because this simplified down to 625 anyway. And now for number 2, we have the fourth root of x cubed. Uh, remember, your exponents are always roots, sorry, power over root. All right, your exponents are always power over root. So for number two, we have the fourth root of x cubed. So our base is x, that doesn't change, but our power that we have is that third, right? It's x raised to the third power, so it's the power over the root, and the root is four. So it's x to the three over four, and that's going to be our answer. So don't forget that exponents are always power over root. The power of the base over the roots of the base. All right, let's go on to number five. Uh, here, we're going to be simplifying these as well, changing them from an exponent to a radical or vice versa, whatever we need to do. Um, and we'll be using a lot of our properties here. So on number five, I'm going to rewrite this to make it a little more clear. I have y to the 4 over 3, all over 16, y to the 2 thirds, all raised to the 3 over 2. So I have a power, I have uh, some exponent, or really a more like a fraction of exponents raised to uh, another power. So what I can do is I can distribute out that 3 over 2 to every single term in here. All right? So I get y to the 4 over 3 times 3 over 2. 4 times 3 is 12. All over 3 times 2, which is 6. All over 16 to the 3 over 2 times y to 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 is 6 over 6, which is just going to be 1. All right? So remember, if everything inside of the parentheses is all uh, being multiplied or divided together, you can just distribute out this exponent to every single term inside of it. All right, so that's why I was able to do that. So now I'm going to simplify this down as much as I can. y to 12 over 6, that can reduce down to y squared. And on the bottom, I have um, 16 to 3 over 2. So 16 to the 3 over 2, that's the same thing as the square root of 16 to the third power. Like we talked about in the previous slide, it's power over root. And the power can go inside the uh, radical or outside. It doesn't matter. It can go either one. So I'm going to put it outside because I can figure out the square root of uh, 16 pretty easily times, uh, times y. So y squared, I have a y squared on the top and a y on the bottom. So I'm technically dividing y squared with y. And if I'm dividing two, ex uh, two exponentials with the same base, I can just subtract their exponents. So I have a base of y on the top, a base of y on the bottom. I can combine them. And since they're being divided with each other, I just subtract the exponents. So this 2 minus the 1. So I'm left with a y on top. Now the square root of 16 is 4. So 4 to the third power, which is... 64, so we get y to the 64 
for number one. So these are just using a bunch of the uh, exponential rules that we have. If you don't really fully remember them, go back to a completed module 12 note packet, or if you have your note packets, go back to it, and you'll see all the uh, rules over there. Now number six, uh, it's the same thing inside the parentheses, everything's being multiplied or divided with each other, so I can distribute out that two or three to each uh, base in there. So I get 27 to the two over three times x to the three over four times two over three, which will give me six over 12. So I can uh, simplify this out some more. 27 to the two over three, I can rewrite as the cube root of 27, all squared. And I'm writing it with a power outside because I know what the cube root of 27 is. So I can solve this out a little easier than if uh, the square was inside of the root times x to the one half. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and I have that square times x to the one half times 9x to the one half. And it says we need to just simplify it. It doesn't, change, it doesn't say to uh, change it from exponential to uh, radical or radical to an, ex to an exponential. It just says to simplify it. So we can leave it just like that to give us an answer of 9x to the 1 half. So again, if you're a little confused about all the rules that I'm using, go back to uh, the chapter 12 note packet, review uh, all the properties, all the rules for the exponentials to give yourself a little reminder, a little refresher. All right, we're going to keep going though. We're going on to number nine. And on number nine, uh, we're told to simplify the expression by writing it using rational exponents and then using the properties of rational exponents uh, then we'll assume that all various positive exponents in simplified form should all be positive. Great. All right, so let's work this out. Number nine, we have the square root of 64y. So we can rewrite this as 64y to the one-half all over is 64y, or uh, is the cube root of 64y. So we can rewrite this as 64y to the one-third. All right, and since I'm since 64 y is the base for the top and the bottom, I can just subtract one half from one six because the bases are the same. We're dividing both of them. I can just subtract the exponents and put the combined exponents at the top. So one half minus one third, same thing as three over six minus two over six, which is one over six. So. All of this is the same thing as 64y to the 1 over 6. And since everything inside the parentheses is being multiplied together, I can distribute that 1 over 6 to each part of the, uh, or into each base inside the parentheses. So 64 to the 1 6 times y to the 1 6. And 64 to the 1 6 is the sixth root of 64 times y to the 1 6. And 64, uh, the, sixth, the, the sixth cube, or sixth root, sorry, of 64 is just going to be 2. Or in other words, 2 to the sixth gives me 64. So that becomes just 2 times y to the 1 6. And that's going to be my answer. I can't simplify it anymore from here. So I'm going to leave it just like that. And that's going to be my simplified answer for number 9. Let's keep on going. Uh, now we're doing number 10. Number 10, uh, same thing. We're just going to be simplifying the expression as much as we can. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to break this up and use a different uh, rule of exponentials or of radicals and exponentials. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. So the cube root of 256x cubed y to the 7, that's going to be the same thing as the cube root of 2 to the 6, x cubed, y to the 6, times the cube root of 2 squared times y. And I can do that because 2 to the 6 times 2 squared gives me 2 to the 8, and 2 to the 8 gives me 256. So I'm just splitting up all the exponentials, or all the, um, yeah, all the exponents, because everything in this first Radical is going to simplify, is going to uh, factor out nicely, not really factor, but it's going to uh, cube root very, very nicely. It'll give you whole numbers. 
Well, everything here on the second radical is basically my leftovers, what's going to say underneath the radical. So that's why we split it up this way, because the cube root of 2 to the 6, that's going to be just 2 squared, right? I can make two groups of 3 out of 6. So from here, this can simplify down into 2 squared. I have three x's now, and I can make groups of 3 because of the root. I can make one group of uh, three x's, so it's just times x. And then uh, next, I have six y's. Right, I have six y's right here. I need to make groups of three, uh, three of them. And I can make two groups of three out of six uh, six y's. So times y squared. All right. And then uh, for the second uh, radical, uh, the cube root of two squared y. I can't take anything out of it. I cannot make any groups of three out of two twos and one y. So that just stays as the cube root of two squared y. All right. So if I rewrite this nicely, it becomes 4xy times the cube root of 4y. So that's why we split it up that way. Uh, you don't have to do this way. You could just go right from the beginning and solve it out if you could. But there's just a different way to solve this out. And that's our simplified version of number 10. All right, now for number 11, uh, what we're going to do for this one, we have a different rule where... Uh, if you have a cube root, or sorry, any type of root, any type of radical, say the product, that works a little better. If you have a radical of a fraction, we can change that radical to put it on the top and the bottom. So the fourth root of all of 81 divided by x is the same thing as the fourth root of 81 all over the fourth root of x. It's the same exact thing. So we're going to rewrite it this way because the fourth root of 81 is. Um, going to be 3. 3 to the 4th power gives you 81. So we can rewrite this as 3 to the x of 1 4th. Uh, or actually, it's not rewriting as x to 1 4th because we do need to rationalize it. So I'm going to put it down below. 3 to the 4th root of x. Uh, the reason I'm keeping it like this is because we have a radical in the bottom. We don't want a radical in the bottom. So we need to change the form. And to do that, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by whatever we can multiply x to the 1 fourth with to get rid of that x to the 1 fourth. In this case, that's going to be x cubed. Or sorry, the cube root of x. All right? So we're multiplying with the fourth root of x cubed. I'm not sure if I put x, the third root up top. Sorry about that. It should be the fourth root of x cubed. Because when you multiply the bottom out together, it gives you a whole x on the bottom. We don't want any radicals on the bottom, so we're multiplying it by whatever will give us a whole exponent on the bottom, which in this case would be x to the 3 over 4, or just the fourth root of x cubed. So we get 3 to the fourth root of x cubed. Uh, I think an easier way to see this actually is if we did change it to an exponent, so I'm going to do this both ways. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they both give you the same answer. But we have 3 to the x to the 1 fourth. That's this part right here. I'm just redoing it in a different way. I'm doing it in exponents rather than radicals. So we have 3 to the x, x to the 1 fourth. We don't want a fraction as an exponent on the bottom. So we need to multiply x to the 1 fourth by uh, another variable, another x, that will get rid of that 1 fourth. And that's why you multiply it with x to the 3 over 4. Because if you multiply two variables with the same base, you add the exponents. So if you multiply x to the 1 fourth with x to the 3 over 4, you have the same base of x, you add them together, and you get the base of, I'm sorry, you, you get the uh, exponent of just x. And you don't want to change the value of the function. So whatever you multiply the bottom with, you multiply the top with as well. So that's why we get 3x to 3 over 4 on the top as well. So these two are the exact same thing. There's just two different ways to go about it. And I think seeing it as exponent just makes it a little easier to see. So I just want to do it that way as well. All right? So that's number 10 and number 11. Let's keep on going. On number 17 now, oh, we're told to solve the equation and check for extraneous solutions. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're trying to solve the equation and we have a square root somewhere in the middle of it. We want to isolate that square root to make our lives a little easier. All right, so we're going to have minus 2 on both sides. 
to get the square root of x plus 10 equals x minus 2. And the reason we do that is because from here we can square both sides here. We have that square root. And when we do, it's easier to find the square of x minus 2 than it is to find the square of 2 plus the square root of x plus 10. You don't want to square it right from the beginning because it's going to be uh, a, a little confusing. All right? So from this point, it's a, lot, it's a lot easier. So we're going to square both sides from here. So we square the square root. You just get rid of the square root. And x minus 2 squared, that's a perfect square trinomial. So we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. You could just spoil it out to get the same thing. And then from here, we're going to add like terms so we can um, factor it out and find our solutions. So when we subtract x and 10 to the other side, we get 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. And that's going to factor out into x minus 6, x plus 1. So our, our uh, solutions to this problem are 6 and negative 1. Uh, now, I don't say the other solutions are the two possible solutions. Because remember, at this point, we need to double check that it actually makes sense. So we're going to plug in 6 and negative 1 into our original equation, because that's what they gave us, and we need to double check that it makes sense. All right? So let's do x equals 6 first. So we have 2 plus the square root of positive 6 plus 10 needs to equal 6. So when we do that, 2 plus the square root of 16 equals 6. 2 plus 4 equals 6. 6 does equal 6. That makes sense. 6 is a good answer. Now we're going to do the same thing with x equals negative 1, because that could be a solution as well, or it could not be a solution. We don't know. So we need to double check. So you have 2 plus uh, negative 1 plus 10 equals 6. The square root, or 2 plus the square root of negative 1 plus 10 is 9, equals 6. 2 plus 3 equals 6. 5 does not equal 6. So negative 1 is not a solution. So our only answer to this problem is x equals 6. And I do want to say it's very important that you plug both of these answers to double check into your original equation. You can only double check if it's a real solution by plugging them into the original equation, not uh, any of the other equations that we played. All right? So you get your two solutions, plug it back into the very first equation we give you, double check it from there. And looks like that's it for the video, guys. Chapter 12 wasn't that long, and hopefully that video was helpful.